So I recently had this epiphany, recently had this dream of mine that I would like to eat fruit all year round. Um, and obviously there are some huge benefits of having fresh fruit or homegrown fruit, even dehydrated homegrown fruit all year round. My body, for whatever reason, just seems to behave and um, operate better when I'm eating fruit. Um, not only do I like it, but it seems to be very good for me. <laughs> I know a lot of people, um, you know, have, may have issues with protein or may have issues with carbs, gluten, dairy, regardless what it is. Um, for whatever reason, fruit really does well for my system. And I, I just love it. I love to have ripe fruit all year. And we talked about very recently, guys, um, in an episode of Fruit Talk about the hungry gap, but not necessarily the hungry gap at the beginning of the season, like most farmers experience, but the hungry gap in my yard. And I thought it'd be really a good idea to, so I can sort of be a fruitarian, although I'll never be a fruitarian, but um, if I wanted to come close to that, to eating most of my diet of just fruit, then what would I have to grow um, to fulfill that, to have fruit all year round, not just during the growing season, but also in the winter time. Um, so I put together this ripening chart and, um, I hope you guys are going to get something out of it. So that's what we're going to talk about as well in today's episode of fruit talk. Thank you guys here for joining me once again. This is, uh, this is Ross Ratty and this is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night, nine o'clock Eastern. We talk, like I said, a lot about fruits, a lot about vegetables, how to use some of that stuff in the kitchen and also how to grow it. And uh, maybe some of the weird and interesting fruits that you guys have probably never heard of. So that's actually a big part of this episode is really putting together a wide spectrum of tasty fruits to cover a long period of time. And, um, you know, there are obviously some that really are value crops in this particular sense because they can be stored throughout the wintertime. So we'll, we'll get into that as well, but we can start here, I guess, at the beginning of my season. And as we've kind of already been lay, laying this out for you guys over the last couple of weeks, um, the last couple of months actually, is that we first start off with the strawberry. And I talked to you guys about the June bearing types, the ever bearing types, but this really is the first fruit to ripen in my yard. Um, so it's really nice to have, a, you know, that long break of not having any fruit to then go into the strawberry. And it just, uh, it makes everything so much more, uh, worthwhile. Um, or at least so much more, um, amazing so the the next fruits that we start out with after may because those strawberries can start mid-may um and they can go all the way till july but you even can have um right afterwards you might get some fruits in late may but the majority of them really start at the beginning of june and we're talking about things like gumi um we're talking about things like uh honeyberries and the mulberry, um, you may even have some apricots. We've had some currants in the past, and I think I've excluded the current from this list simply because we're going to no longer grow currants, I believe. Um, I think we're getting rid of them. Um, it just doesn't seem to really make sense if you can have gumi. So, um, and also I'm not really, I haven't been a big fan of them processed. I'm gonna do, I think, a. A separate video of why I'm just not growing the currants anymore um, but yeah that's some of the fruits you start out with in mid-June and then towards the end of June you get more mulberries you get cherries and bush cherries plums more apricots the blueberries come in um, and then once you get into the beginning of July we're looking at things like the gooseberry the marionberry the blackberry Again, more mulberries and cherries. You could even get some Breba figs off your fig trees. Um, 
continuing on with the stone fruits for the most part, uh, the plums, the apricots. You're going to obviously have a lot less apricots around July. And also um, plums are one of those stone fruits that has a pretty large harvest window depending on the varieties that you're growing. Um, so you could have plums even all the way up to August and they can start sometime in June. Um, depending on the variety that you guys are growing. Um, I had my first plums this year in early July um, and I'm sure there are some varieties that will ripen um, before that in June. Um, you'd also get at this time of the year in July some nectarines and some peaches. That's actually what I've been harvesting right now in pretty high quantity. I also have been harvesting the gooseberries. Uh, we did a final harvest of those. We got to trial the marionberry. I might as well give you a little rundown on that. The marionberry is one of the best fruits I've tried um, of recent times, at least a new, a newer fruit. I would say it's actually nine out of a ten, nine out of ten. It blew me away so much that it reminds me a lot of the double the intensity of a raspberry. So if you multiply the intensity of a raspberry by two and then combined that with a blackberry and that's what you would get is a marionberry and they look like blackberries when you eat them it's like eating a blackberry but the flavor is off the charts way better than any other uh, raspberry or blackberry I've ever had so I'm gonna try to grow more of those um, in the upcoming years find a spot for them because this is actually the gap that I'm having right now um, as we've talked about in May and June, we've had a lot of fruit and about 70% of my diet was these fruits. Um, I was eating quite a bit and we ended up because of in, in July, we just ended up losing our cherries to the birds, the squirrels. Um, they really got after them before they were even ripe. We also don't have the most mature marionberry plants. We got rid of our blackberry plants over the years. Um, we don't have any mulberry trees as it stands right now because we've just um, took out our 20 foot tall Illinois everbearing tree and now we're grafting uh, dwarf varieties called Girardi. Um, also our plum crop was kind of light this year. Our apricot crop was non-existent this year. Um, the birds went after the plums. The cat birds are just going crazy in the yard right now, getting a lot of the peaches, a lot of the nectarines that are not even close to being ripe. Um, the blueberries, the birds got some of those at this point, so I'm having to wait. There are blueberries coming in now, uh, but there was a little bit of a gap there in the beginning of July just simply because I didn't have the blueberries netted, and that's a big, big deal. Um they found them and then started going after them and really stripped a lot of the berries off of the, the blueberry plants, unfortunately. I still have plenty left, but again, it's all contributing to this gap here in July. And then also, you would, if you could believe it, we have some summer apples coming in. These are the very earliest apples that you can grow. Things like Pristine and Williams Pride, Zestar. So they're very, very good. Um, at least in my mind, to have something like this, a summer apple, even as early as July, which is just crazy. And you get more of those summer apples in August. Um, I guess I could put, instead of fall apple, more summer. Oh, well, I can't edit this. This is a blog post, by the way, guys, that we created. This chart here that we're talking about is a blog post that I created on my blog, figboss.com. And it's titled Ripening Chart Fruit All Year. And it lists out all the fruits depending on the time of the year that you can ripen. So now moving on to August, you're looking at the strawberries and the raspberries come back. Because what ends up happening is that in July, that's another big reason why July is kind of light for me, is that the raspberries and the strawberries, which are normally super productive and don't stop producing, they do stop for about all of uh, July. So they'll put out a big crop early in the season in May and June, 
and then they'll stop and then their second crop comes in starting in August and that goes all the way till frost um, so this is sort of really helping me at least putting this down on paper not just for you guys but for myself really determining what it is that I should like plant more of you know because we have a, obviously a big gap here in July and that's not something I want so I want to make sure that I'm planting more of these types of things that are in July to then get more fruit at that time of the year. But in August, we also get more, a lot more figs. Um, we can continue to get plums, maybe some European plums, definitely the prune plums. I would imagine we probably would still have some Marion berries, definitely some blackberries. Uh, we would start also getting Asian pears, European pears. And those things here store for about four to five, six months, those pears. So even if you're harvesting them in August, you can make them really last quite long um, into the season, um, into your winter time. We also have uh, nectarines and peaches that are continuing. Um, the fall apples or the summer apples, as we talked about, the blueberries are continuing, but they're pretty much done um in uh, in august the pawpaw is going to start coming in and that's fruit that we haven't really had too much experience with from our own trees um, but this is a fall fruit that's uh, the largest fruit native to north america it's the closest thing that we can grow in a colder climate to a banana or a mango um, it's quite tropical they're very good they don't store very long but I imagine for a good uh, maybe three to four weeks, you could really be snacking on some very tasty pawpaw. Um, about a month worth of uh, harvest there, I imagine. And there wouldn't be too much other fruits that you would want to eat um, over the pawpaw, I think. Um, <clears throat> you have also would get things like hardy kiwi. And these are really, the, they can start in August, but they're more of a late ripening um, fruit. You'd probably see more of them in September. Also the European grape. We start getting those in August and there's um, a lot of different uh, grapes that we've talked about. So in terms of having them in nice succession throughout the year, you've got the gooseberry, which starts in July, which does resemble um, a grape quite a bit in my mind. And then you actually get the muscadine grape after the European table grape. And those are more of a fall grape. We'll get into that in just a minute. But now that we move into September, you've got, again, things like strawberries, raspberries, more figs, um, prune plums, more pears, more apples, pawpaw, kiwi, the European grapes. But now we're adding on things like the jujube. And uh, the, the uh, jujube is kind of like a apple that's dipped in honey, uh, at least in terms of the variety honey jar. And that um, is a really good variety, I think, for fresh eating. However, you can dry them and they dry on the tree naturally. Um, you can also take them off and put them in the dehydrator. They will last for like a whole year in storage. So that's a really good crop if you want to have food all year. And I probably will do that in the future is that I will just have jujube trees specifically to be eating them all winter because it's one of the best dried fruit snacks that you can, you can eat in my opinion. Um, you'd also get things like the persimmon and this is I guess really where the first persimmons you'll see. Um, you could make an argument, at least I think it's possible with varieties like Proc and Gil Ya. Um, those are very early persimmons and they will ripen definitely in September. Um, you may even get some at the very end of August. If I recall correctly, I was getting some Proc persimmons at the end of August last year, which is insane. Um, and then the persimmon is one of those fruits, guys, that we, we've talked about quite a bit over on the YouTube channel. But it's one of them fruits that has a huge harvest window because you can start in September and you can go all the way till March of the following year. And that's fresh fruit. You can have a whole variety of different varieties. Um, like one, as an example, I think Tecumseh 
um, edible landscaping in Virginia, their Tecumseh tree um, of persimmon is ripening for them in March. Um, so that's really cool. At least uh, I believe it was Tecumseh, but they have a whole video on the their persimmons that they grow and the different times of the year that they ripen. Um, so I thought that was really cool to then have such a late variety of persimmon that's even ripening in the spring of the following year. That's kind of bonkers, right? That's just nuts. Um, the persimmon's also one of those fruits that you can pretty much just hang them up anywhere, just somewhere dry, and they're going to start drying up and turning into something like a date. And that's the closest thing that we can get to a date. So if you grow persimmons and you want to have them all year and not just in the fresh form, you can make hoshigaki. You peel off the skin and string them up and have them in a ventilated room and they will dry and they will hold um, as a dried fruit for quite a long time. And they're extremely, extremely tasty. Um, my favorite fruit for all those reasons. Um, but they're also really, really tasty. Um, and then if we keep moving on here, we get, uh, let's see, the pomegranate is one that we haven't mentioned just yet. And this is, again, another fall fruit that can actually store for a decent amount of time, but not the longest amount of time. Um, so if you wanted to store some, I guess you could and extend your harvest a bit. But this is something you can grow in the Philadelphia area. And um, you can definitely plant the Salavatsky pomegranate in the ground and get uh, hopefully in four or five years, reliable harvests. Um, pollination may be an issue, and I'm still trying to tweak that. I know some Philadelphia area growers that um, don't have any issues with pollination, so it just, I think, comes with time getting these pollinators, whatever it is that uh, pollinates them, in the, uh, in the area. So moving on, I guess, now to October, you still pretty much get all the fruits that we mentioned except now you actually can get um, some blackberries because there are primocane varieties. You may see some of these in September as well, uh, but the primocane, just like the raspberry, they fruit on the primocanes, but there's only specific varieties of blackberries that will do this, like Primark Freedom, Primark 45, all the Primark varieties. There are the primocane varieties from University of Arkansas. And those will ripen two crops, uh, and the last crop will be in the fall. Uh, let's see here. So we talked about the persimmon, the jujube, the fig, the fall apple, the pawpaw, pomegranate, and now there is the muscadine grape. This is more of a native grape to the south, to North America. Um, and it's a grape that uh, has a more interesting, more wild flavor than your traditional European table grape. You know, a lot easier to grow, but it does ripen a lot later in my season. And, and sometimes they may not ripen in time uh, because they can go even all the way until November here, where we're in the next month here, um, where you're still getting things like strawberries and raspberries and figs and persimmons and apples and pomegranates. But also you'd get the uh, the muscadine. So that, that kind of right there covers the entirety of the growing season. Um, there's not much else going on at that time in terms of uh, in terms of fruit. So now I guess you could somewhere in here count in some more of the annual fruits that you can grow. Things like melons, um, you know, I guess you could consider tomatoes a fruit, the ground cherries, some of the nightshade berries that you can grow. Um, what else we got? I think that's mostly it in terms of the annuals. Uh, watermelons, um, you know, those are really nice things, obviously, to have. Um, you know, just at different various times of the year. So um, can't necessarily forget about them, but uh, this is mainly just a list here of perennials um, that all of us can grow pretty much without fail. Um, in the Philadelphia area. So, and then in the winter time, we have a section here on the on the chart here for dehydrated, canned, or preserved fruit. Right, you can make a lot of these in the jam, jellies. You can can the fruits whole, 
you can dehydrate them. Um, some of my favorite fruits to dehydrate are the figs, the jujubes, the persimmons. I like making um, jams out of the blueberries, the figs, the strawberries. Um, quince is another one. I actually didn't have, I don't have quince on this list, but quince is supposed to make a really nice um, jam that we've talked about recently. And also I would like to add elderberry on here at some point, as well as the Juneberry. Um, and potentially the Josta berry. So there, there are some more perennials that you can add on this list. It's just that I haven't had the most experience with them. And I would like to experiment and keep adding potentially more fruits, more perennials to these lists as we go along and as we trial different things. You know, we could have nuts, different nut crops um, in the future. Something called a kibia I was interested to grow. Um, there's a whole different host of different fruits that might come into popularity. You never know um, at some point here in the future. Um, yeah, let's see. What else do I like in terms of uh, preserves? I would like to try a persimmon preserve or persimmon jam. They kind of are just jam as they are. It's really quite something. Um, yeah. Raisins, obviously, you can dry grapes into raisins. That's a great snack, assuming you get enough uh, enough grapes. And then lastly, at the bottom, we also just have a section here for winter fruits that are fresh. Um, things like persimmons, as I mentioned, and then citrus. Um, you could also potentially grow some loquats which will ripen you know sometime in the spring you might get some in in may um april march you might get some over the winter time if you can kind of develop some sort of system and really figure out how to get these more tropical or subtropical species of fruits that are evergreen and get them going and get them a, a nice system there's no reason why you can't um have fruit uh, fresh fruit, more fresh fruit in the winter time. So for me, I think what I'm I'm aiming at here, what I've learned from just putting this together, at least for my yard, if I go through this, I would love to obviously have more fruit in May if possible. I know a lot of people say that the honeyberry ripens in May. It's not technically ripe in May. It really ripens in June. Um, I'd like to obviously get these stone fruits to an older age, um, get better at protecting some of them, like the cherries. You know, as soon as those cherries turn any sort of red, the birds, the squirrels are all over them. You know, this upcoming year, need to protect everything. I thought I could get away with it on certain things. So we lost a lot of blueberries, and it just would be a lot better if uh, we could protect these things from the beginning so that the birds and things really had no idea that they ever existed. Um, and there probably would be a lot less bird pressure in general that way. I fed the birds this year, guys. I thought it would be smart to leave some for the wildlife and uh, I'm sort of regretting it. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, I will say we were gonna, we're gonna plant in June here. I want more of the gummies. We're going to propagate those. Um, I want more plums and apricots. The cherry, the Bing type cherries, the more tree type cherries that I've mentioned to you guys in another episode of Fruit Talk, we talked about the bush cherry versus the, the Bing type cherries. And um, the bush cherries are a lot easier to net, whereas the more Bing type cherries are not. So you pretty much at that point have to leave the birds for those cherries. And for me, that just doesn't seem worth it. Not really very happy about that. And I may end up taking out my cherries altogether. Um, I would like to have more Girardi mulberries. We have two of them grafted. It looks like one of them might be doing a little something weird. So... I don't know if we really have two of them grafted or if it's just the one, which is a bit of a shame. But um, yeah, we're going to keep trying to propagate those um, and getting more of those those mulberries around the yard. 
Um, I would like to have in the future a row of honeyberries, maybe a couple rows of these berries. They're really quite something. A big fan. They're nice to have in June. They also do really well in any form of processing. So um, something I could rely on, I think, a bit more than some of these others, like the apricot. Although I would like to have more mature apricot trees because they're just so darn good. And uh, maybe even in different areas of the yard to maybe have some, you know, kind of hedge my bets against a potential late frost. And then we've got the fruits in July. And this is really where I think most of my attention needs to be focused. And, you know, again, for all the reasons we said with all these different fruits, but particularly I think I'd like to have more marionberry plants they're growing they're getting established maybe i'd like to buy some more of them and really dedicate an area for them i think that's the biggest thing the biggest change i could make because everything else is kind of just coming together everything else we kind of have in the right quantity we just need them to be a bit more mature and then in august let's see what can we add well the kiwi is not going to happen for us here i think on this property but there's a lot of fruit that should ripen in august every year um, i don't really run out of fruit in august nor do i usually run out of fruit in september considering the amount of figs and um Usually you would have some pears and some grapes at this, these times of the year. Plus you're still harvesting strawberries and raspberries reliably, right? It's kind of nuts. And then very late in the year, in October and November, that can be a bit sketchy, but, um, you know, really just focusing on the pawpaw, the persimmon, those fall fruits, uh, there's no reason why you can't and the muscadine grape. There's no reason why you can't have uh, continual fruit going into the fall. And there's just a lot of food in the fall anyway. You know, um, like August, September, October, you're, you're still harvesting plenty of vegetables, um, you know, annual type crops. So I, I think personally that's, where I, that's what I'm looking at. I would suggest that you guys maybe take this list from the blog um, see what you're missing and then you know make that same adjustment and judgment call from there that I'm doing um, so that you guys can fill any gaps potentially and it's not just like oh the cherry is only gonna ripen in June and July you know you might have you might find different varieties within these different things that ripen it very odd times of the year right like the apple is one of them that's really the most extreme because of all the genetic diversity that exists with apples thousands of varieties you've got apples that will ripen in july so you know if you want some of these fruits at different times of the year do your research look up some ripening charts that are published from various nurseries i know ac nursery um Adams County Nursery has a ripening chart here that they they will put out. You go to their resources tab and you can see, let's see here, um, they have an apple pollination chart, um, planting guide, maturity chart. Here we go. Maturity chart. You click on that and here is actually a chart that I have literally right there against my wall. And this will pretty much break it all down for you guys. Now, unfortunately, this is where they ripen in South Central Pennsylvania. So you have to adjust for other locations. But, you know, you're getting, um, you know, some of your summer apples, as an example here, all the way over here, which is kind of crazy if you think about it. So, um, you know, that's the beginning of July for South Central Pennsylvania. So for me, I'm about two weeks ahead of these guys on average. 
I'm about 10 days ahead of these guys on average. So if, I, if they're seeing a variety of cherry um, that's ripening on the 15th of June, I'm getting them on the 5th of June. So, um, yeah, so if they're getting their apples actually in early July, I might be able to get some at the end of June, you know. Um, so quite interesting, I think, getting – um. You know, getting this whole thing set up, it just, I think it just makes us all a lot happier, a lot healthier. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be, as I said in the beginning of this episode, 100% fruitarian, but um, if I can have more fruit in my diet, um, I'm just a lot happier, a lot healthier all the time. So uh, my digestion is basically a joke, um, I have better energy. Uh, my insulin, it seems like, is more stable, if you can believe it. Um, so what I like to do in like downtimes is I'll order some fruit. I'll get some dates. I'll get some bananas. More maybe like some tropical fruits, different things that you can't grow here. Citrus and um, and that's sort of just how I get through the winter time. You know, but even in the wintertime, I don't really have enough fruit and I end up, I don't really eat that well in the fruit, in the, in the, uh, in the wintertime. So yeah, I think, uh, for anybody out there, this is going to be a big help. I do greatly appreciate you guys tuning in for another episode of Fruit Talk. If you found this one, um, really helpful, you want to support the podcast, check us out on Patreon, patreon patreon.com slash Ross Ratty. Uh, thank you for all the support for all the people out there who are supporting the, the, uh, the channel and the podcast. Um, also check out the blog, as I've mentioned, you know, this, this post here that we went over is on the blog figboss.com. It's the ripening chart for having fruit all year. So thank you guys so much again. We'll see everybody for next week's episode. Take care and uh, stay safe out there.